Let's just give it a minute here and let people get on. Praise the Lord. Well, it's a good evening this evening. Appreciate the Lord and, and all of his people this time of year. We know the uh, coronavirus seems to be doing what the experts said it would do, that it's going to spike <clears throat> this time of year from Thanksgiving and through Christmas. I hope and pray that the people will be mindful to be more careful. And uh, they're expecting like 30,000 deaths. Uh, thank the Lord that this, and we're hoping that this, these uh, vaccines are going to be an answer to this pandemic. <clears throat> Of course, I know everyone knows that Pfizer, uh, the FDA approved their vaccines and they're, they are already being taken. And um, the initial approval was given to Madeira today and they probably will be sent out, I think they said like 60 million vaccines next week. So hopefully that if these vaccines work, and they say one time, once 75% of the people have taken them by, <clears throat> which they say by summer or end of summer, everyone that wants to take it kid could in America. And that if 75% of the people take it and it works, that the pandemic basically would be over. That would be good news. Um, you know, um, we're just we're just praying, you know. I I have stated several times that I believe that this pandemic. I, of course, I believe that God is in full control of everything. And uh, but the Lord, even though God is in control, um, He doesn't make everything happen or force everything happen. Ecclesiastes states that chance happens to all people, <clears throat> and that includes God's people. God doesn't just dictate everything to happen. There's some things just the law of sowing and reaping takes place, and um, we've had many, you know, pandemics in the world. Uh, <clears throat> in years past, and uh, we, we've had also, you know, other things. But of course, God, his hand is on the, uh, his purpose and his plan. And nothing's going to thwart that. Uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, even though we don't really have any definite indication from the Lord exactly what what he's doing right now uh, we can uh, you know through perception and knowing the word of God we know that we're somewhere close to the end of the Gentile world and so um, I think we can look for you know I think we'll get through this pandemic but I think other things will happen. Um, you know, we've just went through a, a, a historic election that's different than ever anything that's ever been since the presidential elections in America. Um, well, 
we'll just have to see. You know, we have to, some things we have to do is wait and watch and see what the Lord's doing. Uh, but I think, I do think we can ascertain that God's getting this world ready for judgment. I, I put a, I, I posted something I never post anything on Facebook, hardly at all. But today I did post this on there. I, I said that ever that we really all ought to realize that God's in control. Uh, Daniel 2 verse 21 says that God removes kings and he sets them up. The hand, the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord, the Bible says. And <clears throat> um, God's the one that sets up leaders and nations and countries and and uh, he may use people like in, in the United States of America or wherever. He may uh, put it in the hearts and minds of people to cause what he wants to happen to happen so that the, the who he sets up in leadership of nations is set up. But you have to give God, God you have to realize God's in control of that. And then... <clears throat> I mentioned that that's not always good. You know, if if people think that because God set up, set a, a president in place, that it's God's will and therefore that's good for the people, they don't understand the Bible very well because if you look in the history of Israel, God set many wicked kings over Judah and Israel uh, be to punish them uh, because they were uh, their hearts had turned away from God and God was punishing and chastising them to get them humbled enough to get on their knees and and repent and ask God's forgiveness and his mercy to get their hearts turned back to God. And, uh, you know, it's in the, the uh, Psalms in the ninth chapter in the 17th verse, it says that every nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. That's not talking about, you know, a burning hell at all. It's talking about a hellish condition that God would take his hands off of a nation if, if a nation serving God. And I mentioned that today that uh, I posted that on Facebook. I just actually I, uh, I made a text and sent it to my wife and she said, you need to post that on Facebook. And so I did. Um, uh, because I, I stated that America needs to get on their knees and repent and ask God for his mercy because uh, overall liberalism has turned this nation away from God. And I, I just read to her that scripture in second, or I, I texted it to her in second Chronicles 7, 14, very well known by all of us, but I'll read it. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, but that, that was God's answer to Solomon's prayer uh, might get you to look at Second Chronicles 6 and the 6th chapter. I may read Solomon's prayer there. Um, I really do, you know, I know I know and understand the prophecy, but there's a possibility that we could get God to help us if enough people would really call on God for his help. 
I'm I'm fearful that this nation is 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 moved too far away from God to um, you know to humble themselves enough to get God to help us. But if enough of us would pray, and of course I believe that God, even in these difficult times, God's people suffered with the chastisement that was on the whole nation, but God did preserve his people. So I do believe, you know, I've used many times uh, Elijah being on Mount Horeb and, you know, the the wind began to blow and the, the rocks, uh, it busted the rocks against the mountain. And then uh, there was an earthquake, earthquake that shook the mountain. And then there was a fire from heaven. It's all of those, those three things that stated that God wasn't in. He wasn't in the uh, wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. Uh, I believe you'd have to say he wasn't in it for Elijah. Elijah was in the top of the mountain in a cave. It didn't. Those things didn't affect him. He was protected in the cave in the top of the mountain. But then he heard a small, still voice from heaven, and God gave him the judgment for uh, the remainder of his time, and even that he was to uh, anoint Elisha to take his office. Uh, Jehu to uh, be king over Israel, and um, who was it? Um, Hazel to be king over Syria. And so <clears throat> I've mentioned several times that, you know, that that is a type for us. Uh, that story in the Bible is a type. And certainly the winds are blowing and uh, things are not only shaking, but they're going to shake more. Just because this pandemic gets over, there'll be more. I, I believe we're down in the feet members of Daniel 2, uh, Daniel's interpretation of uh, Belshazzar's dream and uh, our Nebuchadnezzar's dream, excuse me. And um, those, you know, down in your, your feet members, you know, it was of iron and clay. And that's where we're, that's where we're at. And uh, in the feet, there's little bitty bones. And so I think that depicts of short spaces of time that a lot of things are going to happen. And uh, of course, it ends up in the 10 toes where the 10 kings will, will eventually rule. But back to Elijah's uh, being in the in the cave and the the wind that blew and the shaking. I don't think that <coughs> the <coughs> uh, the um, earthquake probably hasn't took place yet, as far as that type being fulfilled. Uh, but and then the fire or judgment from heaven that's going to fall. I think God's getting this world nations ready. Uh, they will, they'll try to preserve things by coming together, forming a beast system, a, a world system, a world religion. And um, so uh, those things are happening and they're going to happen. We know in prophecy what's going to take place at the end of the Gentile world. I just thought I would read uh, here in the uh, second in Second Chronicles 6. I, it, you know, there's a little bit of reading here, but if you don't mind listening, well, I think that it's good for us 
you know, sometimes to go back and listen to these, uh, these writings. Solomon had finished building the temple. God had told David that his son would do the building. He wouldn't allow, he let David gather the material, but he wouldn't let him do the building. He, he his hands were too bloody for that. So Solomon, he did finally get the temple built. And here in the sixth chapter in the 12th verse, after he built it, he made a prayer to God before the congregation of Israel. The 12th verse says, he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. I'm sure there were multitudes that came out once that temple was built and gathered around to see what the king was going to do. It says, for Solomon made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high. And he set in the midst of the court, he set it in the midst of the court and upon it he stood and kneeled upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel, spread forth his hands towards heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven, in the heaven, nor in the earth, which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which has kept with thy servant David, my father, at which thou hast promised him and spakest with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Now, therefore, Lord, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that which thou hast promised him, saying, there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to set upon the throne of Israel. Yet, so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law, and thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house, which I have built, have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, <clears throat> to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken, therefore, unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make towards this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven and do and judge thy servants by requiring the wicked to recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel be put to worse before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name. See what I'm saying right there? That if, if Israel be put in the worse before the enemy, because they sinned against you, See, God didn't always stand with the people. A lot of people today think God is going to bless them regardless of their actions. But God, if he loves you, Paul said in, in Hebrews, he said he would chastise those who he loves. And God had to deal with Israel. And of course, I believe with all my heart that America is God's nation for restoration of the church. God sent our forefathers to this nation. They called it one nation under God. They did call it indivisible. But this nation, it will, it will fall in time. It's a, it, 
this nation has turned away from God. We may be able to pray. We may be able to humble ourselves enough to get God's help. But like I said, liberalism, you know, if you study uh, Germany and study Hitler, you'll find out how Hitler got enough backing to do what he was doing was he got the backing of the young people. He dealt with the minds of the young people and turned them towards socialism and finally democracy, uh, dictatorship. But, you know, a lot of people may not know this, but he was very deep in, in pagan worship of false gods. Uh, and, and every ruler that's ever done very much with people uses religion one way or the other. Uh, of course, here it was false religion, but um, like I said, the liberalism that this nation is turning to is going to cause this nation to go into slowly slip into socialism, and it may be more rapid than slowly in the years to come. Uh, I still think we've got some time uh, before uh, God's judgment comes and for the beast system is set up uh, in the end of this world. Anyway, I just wanted to, I want to keep, I want to keep reading here. Let me start with 20. Uh, uh, yeah, five people on 24 uh, Israel be put to the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again into the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up, and there's no rain, because they have sinned against thee, yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto the people from an inheritance for an inheritance I was thinking in in reading this wouldn't it be marvelous if one of our presidents had this kind of fear of God and would stand and pray over the United States of America in front of all the people that wanted to listen to him pleading with God and asking God to consider if we sinned, if we would repent, that he would hear our, our repentance and our prayers. And if we'd turn our hearts, that he would bless us for that. He would forgive us and turn and begin to favor our land. Verse 28 said, and if there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies beseech them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people Israel, when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according to all of his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of the people Israel, but is come from a far country, for the, thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and stretched out, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do accordingly according to all that the stranger calleth to thee far. 
for all people of the earth may know, or that all people of the earth may know, um, thy name and fear thee as doth thy people Israel and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. You know, God did say that when when the the temple of God was built, he did say this and even before they went into the promised land that that's where he would place his name, that God would choose a place to place his name. Well, and that's where the temple, the, the, the temple was the permanent structure that took place of the tabernacle of the wilderness. And, uh, and you know, there is a type in this that, uh, you know, what is in the 12th chapter of Hebrews where Paul said, we, we haven't come to the mountain that burned with fire he was talking about when Moses got the Ten Commandments. He said, but we have come to the Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem. And uh, even Jesus declared that we are the temple of God. Uh, the church, this, this picture of Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem is the body of Christ. It, it, that was the type of the body of Christ, that temple no longer housed uh, God's people or God's covenant, but his covenant was put with the, the, the new covenant that Christ brought in the, and, and uh, instilled in the body of Jesus Christ. And that's where God has placed his name. I was telling people this week, in church or last Sunday that so many people don't understand that God is going to have a restored church and it is the restored body of Jesus Christ. That's what God's working on. That's what he's restoring. That's why he had our forefathers come to the United States of America and, and, the restoration started way back, even before Martin Luther and John and Charles Wesley and the Baptist group and, and uh, all of the many different movements that has brought us finally to America. And finally, in 1901, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost was poured out. The Pentecostal movement, that was a, the restoration uh, that took place here in this country. And of course, it went from Charles Parham's school in Topeka, Kansas, to, to Houston, Texas. And then it went, <clears throat> Brother Seymour went to LA, Los Angeles, California. Finally, uh, there was a little mission established there on Azusa Street. Hundreds, thousands of people got the Holy Ghost in that mission. A, a, a move of God to restore the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> then it moved from there across the United States of America. And, and then now it's went into, you know, many countries. Uh, God's reaching out to many countries in the end of this Gentile world before he'll bring ultimate judgment. But this nation of the United States has had the hand of God on it since its beginning in the, when was it 1620 when their pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock and uh, God's hand has been on this nation and blessed this nation. Uh, you know, it's been a God fearing nation, but this nation has turned from God. Uh, we, you know, 
like I said, and I hate to just use the word liberalism, but I don't know of a better word to use. <clears throat> we should be conservative in our thinking and we should be trying to maintain and preserve the things of God and righteousness and not taking all, all these liberal ideologies uh, in our minds. Uh, God bless this nation and he will judge this nation for turning away from him. And, uh, but I just wanted to read how Solomon began to pray and to ask God. I want to read a little more. It's almost, he's almost done here. Um, verse 36 says, if they sin against thee there, for there is no man which sinneth not and thou be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies and they carry them away captives unto the land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land, whether they are carried captive and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity saying, we've sinned, we've done amiss and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their hearts and all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward the city, which thou hast chosen and toward the house, which I have built for thy name. And of course, we well know the 70 years of captivity that Israel went into Babylon, Israel and Judah, and, and how, uh, Zerubbabel, how Ezra, Nehemiah, how God caused those men and gave them favor with the king of Babylon to go back and begin to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and, and to rebuild the house of God. And <clears throat> it's almost like God put it in Solomon's mind to add this to his prayer. Anyway, it says, verse 39, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O God, into thy resting place, Thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let the saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. And verse chapter seven, verse one says, now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And when all the children saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. The King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God and the priest waited on their offices the Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord, which David the king had made to praise the Lord because of his mercy endureth forever. Um, for when David praised uh, by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them and all Israel stood, moreover Solomon hall hall hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offerings and the fat, the peace offerings, because the brazen altar which Solomon made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat 
Also, at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him, a very great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. In the eighth day, they made uh, a solemn assembly for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the three and 20th day, the seventh of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in their hearts for the goodness of the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and his own house be prosperously affected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek thy face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be opened, mine ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and and sanctify, sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be perpetually, there perpetually. As for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he'll say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on to their other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Well, <clears throat> I know that's quite a bit of reading, but I just felt that I ought to read that, uh, you know, because I feel like God's people really ought to be calling on God right now during this time, not just not just because of this pandemic, but uh, look, what have we lost? Three over 300,000 people to this pandemic. Um, it, it, you know, we could got, we could get God to turn this away from us. There's no question in my mind about that. If this nation would humble themselves and pray and, uh, you know, I know eventually because we know prophecy, we know what's going to take place. We can see it. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to reach uh, only a remnant of God's people in the harvest in the end of this Gentile world. But I do want to call on God's people to pray. Pray for your nation. Pray for our leaders in this nation. Um, I, I do think that we possibly will have some more time. I think this, this, uh, these 
presidential elections that are going to take place in the next, at least the next three terms, I think you're going to see America continue to slip. And it's probably not going to be too much of a gradual slip. It's going to be fairly rapid. Many things, I think, will take place. But remember, even in the time of trouble, God's always protected his people. Um, they may have suffered, but God protected them in the time of suffering. So let's continue to call on him. And uh, he, we're, we're serving a great God. What a salvation that he's called us to. Uh, what did Paul say? That the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Praise God, saints. There's, uh, you know, and, and really in, you know, I mean, any death, one death in the body of Christ is too many. But really, we haven't had too many. Uh, you know, the numbers of death has been held down considerably. And we just need to keep praying. You know, I know that uh, there's other things that are, uh, you know, that we're suffering with right now that we, we I would like to mention Brother uh, Ron McNabb in Keswick, Canada. Precious, precious brother, precious friend of mine uh, in Brother Goss's assembly there. Uh, we've been praying for the possibility of a liver transplant for him because they told him that if he didn't get a liver transplant, his uh, survival would be grim. And uh, they made a decision that he's not a good candidate for a, a, a liver transplant. There would just be so many uh, repercussions from the, even from the surgery, if he was able to make it through the surgery. So if I've got it right, uh, I believe they brought him home. They either did bring him home today or they're going to. And uh, so we certainly need to pray for Sister Pauline McNabb and the family, the church there in Keswick, Brother Sister Goss, and uh, have them in your prayers because you just can't live without a liver. And uh, his kidneys, uh, just his organs are just shutting down. So we need to really pray and ask God. If God doesn't give him a miracle, we, we know that we won't, we're going to lose him. But God's capable of miracles. At the same time, God's wisdom sometimes is beyond that that we can fathom in our uh, human minds. We know that God, you know, look, Jesus said this, that a sparrow doesn't fall to the ground, but what God knows it. And, and how much more are we than sparrows? How much more are we than, than the lilies of the field? If he, you know, God, God's hands on life and God's aware of everything and how much more. Uh, the psalmist said that uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And so sometimes it's hard for us to accept and let go, but God, God, uh, you know, it's not over. That's why understanding the resurrection of the dead is so important of God's people. Uh, because uh, just because you die doesn't mean that it's over for you. God, there is a resurrection of the just and of the unjust. And so God's people, they're going to live and they're going to have an opportunity to finish their course unto everlasting life. I, I know Brother Ron McNabb well enough that I know that he, he's uh, striving uh, for, for eternal life. He's striving. I know he wants to make the bride of Christ. So let's, let's pray that God's hand would work his will 
there and Brother Ron McNabb's uh, life. Uh, I know there's others, uh, Sister Locally here, Sister Cindy, my daughter-in-law, Cindy Smith, her mother, uh, they're bringing her up here for a month. And, and uh, I know that uh, um, I know that, you know, she's getting older in her 80s and she's needing help and care. So we need to pray for Michael and Cindy Smith that God would help them and that family to determine how to care for Sister Angie, um, Sister Cindy's mother. Um, and then we have others, you know, in our our assembly, Brother Wallace, Brother Steve, uh, I mean, uh, Brother uh, Weaver, Brother Ray and Susan Weaver. I mentioned Brother Wallace, Brother Daniels. You need to keep him in your prayers because he's just suffering with uh, fluid, you know, uh, around his heart almost continually. He just can't keep it off. Now let's pray that the doctors would help uh, find a way that uh, treatment would would serve him, that he wouldn't suffer with that. Um, trying to think of who else uh, somebody may want to write up on there. Uh, I know Brother Fidel in Guatemala. He's on here. I see his name. Uh, he always asks us to pray for him and the work there in Guatemala. He's uh, He's got, as far as I know, the only body church over there right now in Guatemala City. And so he certainly uh, wants and, and uh, uh, has asked for us many times to keep them in prayer. The Dominican Republic, remember them. Remember Brother John Budge works in Nacogdoches and Sebastopol and uh uh, Brownsville, Brother Hugo Rodriguez, uh, Brother brother, uh, brother White is the pastor in Nacogdoches now. Brother Duncan, of course, has been the pastor in Sebastopol, and Brother Hugo Rodriguez, and, and then the pastors in Mexico that work over there. Brother Memo Cano uh, and those churches over there. Brother Memo was Brother Bud's interpreter for uh, ever since Brother Jack Lewis passed away. So pray for Brother Memo and Sister Carmen and those works. Uh, they're going through a transition. They certainly need our prayers. And I know that they cherish our prayers. Uh, pray for the body of Christ. You know, we're having Zoom meetings for the ministry once a month. We've been having them. We had a really precious meeting last last Saturday. We'll have another one in January. And uh, it uh, it is a way to maintain fellowship, see one another. It certainly doesn't take place of a physical meeting, but it, it certainly was good to hear the brethren, to see their faces on Zoom, you know, a Zoom meeting. In fact, I would mention to the local church here in Little Rock, I've been considering having this meeting as a Zoom meeting rather than a Facebook broadcast. Some of you may give your uh, your comments on that. Anyway, uh, I just appreciate all of you. Appreciate you all. Uh, you know, appreciate everyone that's that's on with us tonight. I love this body. I love this message. I love this nation. You know, I told, I was telling the church Sunday, I love life. I just do. I can't imagine not loving what the Lord has prepared for us throughout eternity or throughout, you know, everlasting. Uh, we use that word eternity. It really means with no beginning or no ending we would have everlasting life, not eternal. Uh, you know, God's the only one that's eternally, no beginning, no ending. But uh, you know what I mean when I say that. 
I love living. I love life. I was telling, <laughs> I was telling the church, uh, uh, something's happening. You know, I used to, and I don't, I'm not saying anything to you brothers that love to hunt. I was an avid hunter as a young man, and I don't see anything wrong with that. But I love life so much. I said, sometimes I find, you know, like here recently, I found a little spider in, in one of my bathrooms. And there wasn't anybody in there, me. I looked at that little spider and I said, you just go on and do whatever you're going to do. I said, I'm going to let you live. I'm not going to kill you. Just go on and do your thing. <laughs> you know, there's just something about life. You just, you know, when you know what death is, that, that uh, I love. The Bible said a, a, uh, a live dog is, is better than a dead lion. Just, you know, just showing that life, something that has life in it, and no matter if there is something greater, uh, even, you know, uh, well, I won't go into all of that. But anyway, I do love life. And I know I'm going to love everlasting life where there's no sorrow, no no separation, no no tears. I'm... I'm going to be a part of that. I'm trying to gear my mind up that I don't lose, uh, I don't lose the desire for that, and that I don't get so busy in this life that I don't um, enhance my relationship with my Maker, and that I don't seek Him to be a part of His everlasting plan. I know you do too. God bless your hearts. I love all of you. Uh, the local church in in uh, Little Rock, I'll see you all Sunday morning at 9.30, breakfast in the dining room, 10 o'clock Bible study, uh, 11.30 service upstairs. I know we're nearing Christmas. is a week from this Friday. It's just hard for me to believe that it's come that fast. But... Uh, Christmas is coming. I don't know, you know, I, I don't think you can find out even in research. It, I was telling Brother Mark Boyd and I were talking recently, and um, it seems like God's hid some dates from us that we can't, uh, you know, there's some things the Lord's just hidden from us. And you, you, can't, you can't come up with exact dates even of Christ. When he was born, I don't mind telling you when I think he was born, but, uh, but you know, I could be wrong. But, uh, but what I was going to say was, is I, I am, I don't think it is uh, profitable to take a strong stand against Christmas. Our nation recognizes the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd hate to see them do away with that. I'm thankful we still recognize that our Savior was born. Many people, I understand, commercialize it. Maybe Christ doesn't have a place in a lot of it, but I'm glad our nation still recognizes the birth of Jesus Christ. And when he came to this world and the purpose, the reason that he came to this world to reconcile us back to God from the fall of Adam. And uh, so I've got thankfulness uh, this time of year. And, you know, I think about that. Uh, I mentioned, I, I will tell you when I feel that I don't think Jesus was born in December because of the shepherds tending their flock in the field. It was too cold at that time in Israel uh, for them to be in the field with their flocks. You know, they'd take their field to grassy areas. They're uh, not their field, but their sheep are herd to grassy areas and graze off different areas. And they'd stay out there in the summer months, spring, summer, and fall months and uh, graze their sheep. But it was too cold in the wintertime. They'd have their sheep put up and uh, and protected in the wintertime. Uh, but 
I feel like Jesus was born on the Day of Atonement, uh, which would be sometime in late September or early October, October in our calendar. Um, but um, because three and a half, uh, 33 and a half years later, 30 years later would be exactly the Day of Atonement. But six months later, which would be the Passover, <clears throat> he lived 33 and a half years. And, um, and I know he was our Passover lamb. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And so uh, in my estimation, it fits, that fits, but there's no absolute evidence. There's a few people who think he was born even in the summer, but most people do think he was born in the fall with what evidence we have, uh, you know, concerning Herod, uh, when Herod was set in office, when Jesus came six months after John the Baptist, when Zacharias' time was in his, uh, uh, it was, his, <clears throat> excuse me, it was his course in the uh, serving in the temple. So anyway, that's just food for thought. God bless your hearts. It's always good to talk about the things of God. And uh, I know this hadn't been evangelistic for sure, but <clears throat> but I think we're living in a time right now where we need to be sober some. We need to have some sober talks. We need to, you know, consider some things. I hope that there's some people watching this or will see it uh, on the Facebook page afterwards. It's saved there. <clears throat> and I we have several people that visit our website, our church website. It'll be on there also. And I'm hoping that people will see this and their hearts may turn towards God and accept uh, this prayer of Solomon and recognize if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wickedness, their wicked ways, God will hear, the Lord will hear and, and uh, he will save our land. So God bless your hearts tonight. I'm going to close here. Please pray for me. Pray for the Little Rock Church. Pray for the Wichita Church, the Wich Brother Gary Green, Sister Denise. They've That church has really been through some things here of late, uh, had several COVID cases, but they're coming out of that. They're, I think most of their COVID cases is over with and... Uh, but pray for them, the Lord will help them uh, and encourage them and get them back, you know, uh, in a, in, uh, on top of things. And then um, the Dominican Republic, pray for the work in the Dominican Republic. And I mentioned Mexico, uh, Brother Bud's works and the work in Mexico. Remember the other missionary works, Brother Finnecombe's work in uh uh, Honduras, and also the works in uh, 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 Ecuador, uh, Brother John Wright's works in Mexico, also Brother uh, John Peach and Sister Beverly working with those uh, that Brother Martin started over there and Brother Martin Baxter in um, and his son Haven over in the Philippines, a great group of, group of God's people. Brother, uh, we've got several people in Africa, several works there, brother, good ones. Brother, uh, uh, oh, help me. <laughs> the brother, uh, I, I don't even know where he's at right now. But anyway, there's another African work over there, Good Brother Goodwin's work. Of course, Brother Charlie Mays had works over there that are still going on. God bless all your hearts. Um, keep us in your prayers and we'll keep you in ours. Have a good night. God bless. Bye-bye.